Hello friends, I hope you're doing fine and you're staying safe. You and your family are very safe from this uh, second wave of COVID. And I also hope you're navigating through the markets and weaving in and out of trades profitably. Friends, in this video, I want to discuss a behavioral aspect of the market and discuss with you something that is known as the butterfly effect. Now, we all know that the butterfly is an extremely tiny, extremely small and lightweight uh, 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 creature. The flapping of the wings of a butterfly cannot cause any significant disruption around us. And yet, in behavioral finance, in behavioral science and in financial markets, there are times when a small thing, a very tiny thing equivalent to the flappings of the wings of a butterfly can actually trigger an avalanche of asset price movement in either direction. Let me give you examples. When would you say the seeds for the Saudi Aramco IPO were sown? Do remember that Saudi Aramco is the crown jewel in uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia's uh, uh, ruling family, uh, popularly called the palace. So uh, Saudi Aramco is the crown jewel of the palace. So far, the Saudis have been staunchly refusing to part with the shares and they've basically shot down all proposals by the uh, international investment bankers to part with the shares. And in 2019, December 2019, the Saudi Aramco IPO mopped up a little over $25 billion, even though Prince Mohammed bin Salman ideally wanted $200 billion. Why did it happen? Why did the Saudis suddenly get forced to part with the shares? Now here is a butterfly event. We all know what happened in Egypt during the Qaboos riots. Qaboos is uh, something like what we uh, in India call a naan. It's flatbread naan. Wheat ran out. Nans were in short supply, Egyptians were starving, there were already some uh, other uh, social slash religious slash uh, uh, financial points of pain and it triggered off Arab Spring. Now Arab Spring uh, uh, created some fears in many states where uh, uh, the authoritarian regimes feared the public would stage some kind of a revolt. Saudi Arabia is primarily a Sunni country and it feared some kind of uh, uh, public anger within the Shias who are a minority and are definitely uh, uh, put under a watch. Now Saudis started a very very uh, uh, liberal uh, helicopter money program distributing money free of cost so that people stayed indoors and didn't create problems. And what do they do? For revenue, they export oil and gas. They had to sell more and more of oil and gas so that they could collect money and distribute this helicopter money. The more oil and gas they sold, the more the price fell and the prospects of Aramco fell. This was not all. Arab Spring and the events subsequent to the Arab Springs were something that occurred in 2011. In January 2016, the Saudis beheaded, publicly executed a, a, a Shia Ayatollah called Nimr al-Nimr, Sheikh Nimr, Nimr al-Nimr. Thereafter, uh, there was some uh, uh, anger boiling over in uh, uh, the Shia population in Saudi Arabia. If you were to Google search Al-Awamiya, it is a small town in Saudi Arabia and in early 2017, to the absolute surprise of the Saudi armed forces, the citizens living in Al Awamiya. It was like a ghetto completely surrounded by the Saudi armed forces. Uh, uh, entry and exit was after thorough checking of uh, any, uh, anybody going in and out of the ghetto. They opened fire at the Saudi army. They brought out bazookas, anti-tank missiles, etc, etc. And the Saudis were absolutely surprised as to where these weapons came from. Thereafter, it was no more possible to delay the public issue of Saudi Aramco. 
money had to be raised and this was basically the butterfly effect that pushed the Saudis to launch the Saudi Aramco IPO. And now that the Saudis have launched the Saudi Aramco IPO, they've not got enough funds. They will continuously need more and more funds, which means they will either borrow more and more from the bond market or keep coming out with follow on public offers. As a matter of fact, as I record this video, there have been ample talk of Saudis launching another IPO of Aramco, which means they will desperately first try to push up oil prices and then they will try to sell more oil, thereby pushing the price lower. If this is not the butterfly effect, I don't know what is. Have you heard many times the markets really come down because one uh, aspect or one segment of the market, I'm not talking of uh, uh, a particular share, but maybe a non-stock market, uh, uh, maybe the bond market, maybe currency or commodity market, some asset class collapses, the investor has to make good his mark to market payments or even losses pay for margin calls. And then the domino effect, just like uh, uh, one domino falls on your bowling uh, 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 alley, it topples the ones uh, around it, the markets tend to fall. These are also triggered by something called the butterfly effect. Look at the markets around you. Uh, lumber, which is wood, right, has appreciated six times in the last 14 months or 13 months. When lumber hit a lower circuit, metals also fell very, very sharply last week. Why did this happen? Because metals had appreciated significantly. Traders like me who were not used to seeing aluminium very easily past the 125 mark are now seeing aluminium at 200 plus levels in the recent past. Copper, which failed to go up above 500, 550, has gone above 800. Nickel crossed 1300, 1350 and appeared to be headed towards 15, 1600 if the market grape wine was to be believed. But everybody is edgy, everybody is nervous and it will take very little by way of the butterfly effect to make traders extremely jittery. See what happened between the 11th or 12th of May and the 14th of May in Hindalco and Tata Steel. Just because metal prices fell, these stocks started getting the jitters. By holding just one lot long, you would have been uh, uh, between 1,8,000 to 1,20,000 in a loss, holding just one lot of futures in the long. Now, this is why I say that study of behavioral finance is super critical if you want to succeed in the equity markets as a trader. Why? Because you should not just look out at market internals, numbers, statistics, and the chartical signals that are being uh, uh, displayed to you by your charting software. But you will also have to look at the behavioral aspects of the market and keep yourself on guard, on your toes, because adversity can hit you anytime from any direction. Most Indians would not even be familiar with the fact that lumber or wood, lakdi, is even traded on the commodity exchanges. And here you are, when lumber hit a lower circuit, it dragged down aluminium, uh, it dragged down uh, iron ore, it dragged down stainless steel, copper, lead and zinc because profit taking occurred. And then stocks which were in the business of steel, aluminium, nickel, etc., Tata Steel, Sale, Hindalco, JSW, Jindal Steel, etc., suffered mini collapses. Which is why having a 360 degree worldview of the financial markets help. Believe me, the butterfly effect is for real. Keep your eyes and ears to the ground, close to the ground and monitor the horse hooves of the approaching butterflies. Friends, tomorrow is the 20th of uh, uh, May and as I said in my weekly video, 20th May is also the GSAP or Government Securities Acquisition Program by the RBI. I will update you about this in the forthcoming weekend uh, weekly market outlook. Till then, stay safe, trade carefully, 
and let's be careful out there. I wish you have a very, very profitable day. This is Vijay Bambani signing off for now. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. And click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. In the comment section, do connect with me and let me know what you think of this video. Also, visit the Equity Master channel, the link to which is in the description panel below this video and you can check out my other videos which I put up there every single day. Have a very, very profitable day. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching. Vijay Bambwani signing off for now. Goodbye.